a good day. I'm John Harrison, and this is Conversations with Great Authors. The best thing about being a publisher is helping authors' dreams come true. Those words are from Charlotte Pierce, our guest, a small publisher. And um, Charlotte, you were a small publisher. Welcome, first of all. Thank you. To, Thank you. To this event. Yes. You're a small publisher. An author comes to you wanting to publish their book. What is the process for you? Well, first of all, I would uh, see whether they have a complete manuscript or whether they're just developing an idea. I think the best scenario would be if they're just developing the idea because what they need to do is consider a timetable and I would consider that you know I would develop a timetable with an author that I take on but um, you basically have to have a book finished about three months before the publication date <clears throat> so for uh, distribution to reviewers and author review copies and getting you know just all best case scenario would be three three months before the publication date so a timetable would be the first thing and then uh, they should have an author platform is and I can explain what that is if you wanted me to yeah briefly yeah. tell us tell us what that is because right um, there are people out there who want to know this yeah. so I'm a small yeah. publisher I'm, I'm not random house with you know a vast promotional um, you know arm of you know, with dozens of people working in it. So the author should d consider, you know, ways to get out their expertise as either, even for fiction. Um, but especially for nonfiction, that's a little easier. You know, you can, you need to uh, be familiar with social media, or if you hate social media, which many authors do, <laughs> um, you need to hire somebody. It's a free, platform with billions of people potentially that you could access. Now this doesn't mean that they'll all come and buy your book, but you need to be able to leverage that and what I tell, <laughs> we told people at our IPNE, uh, Independent Publishers of New England Conference, you know, somebody was asking about social media, I just hate it and, and we said, you know, well get over it because either that or hire somebody, which you can do. You know, it's, it's a free platform and you need to be able to leverage that. Um, start building a platform on the social media website. You should have a website. A blog is a helpful thing. Um, do speaking engagements. There are so many organizations out there that need speakers or blog, guest bloggers and things like that. So just kind of start building that expertise out and getting to known as a as a specialist in that field niche is important too so so when mm -hmm. when an author comes to you with with a manuscript mm -hmm. you want at least most of these things already done I would like that you know if you know. if not I'll say you know this is going to take a lot longer than you thought because you need to establish that if we take a unknown author to a publication date and they nobody knows about them then we either have to buy advertising and just you know dump a bunch of money into that with no guaranteed outcome or we have to build on their existing network of, of um, fans and one of the most important things is start right now if you want to publish a book start right now building an email list is those those people belong to you. They are your evangelists. They are your, um, you know, street team. You can build um, all the advice I've gotten lately about book marketing is start with your email list. Make sure you're building that every week, every day you meet somebody. Put them on your email list and ask them, of course, you know, if that's okay. But that's hugely important. Well, I would think m many maybe even most authors are introspective, mm -hmm. quiet, and this is not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. their thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how you, how you get them to do that, but maybe, I mean, if, if you publish their book and um, mm -hmm. they, they have that reward of yeah. it being published, do you think that would influence them uh, to do more of these things that they haven't done them already because they now have their book in hand, which is sure. a great thing for, for an author? 
Yeah, you, so. you always have to start where you are. You know, a lot of authors will come to me with a completed manuscript and no social media. And if I find that the project is viable and attractive enough, I'll get them started on that. Um, yeah, I mean, you just have to do what you're capable of doing. I mean, if it's too stressful to do that social media, then you really, you really do need to hire somebody, though. Um, and that's possible. There are people who, who are helping out with that kind of stuff. Do, um, I know editing is a very important part mm -hmm. of the process. And when you receive manuscripts from authors, mm -hmm. is, is the editing one of the major problems? I mean, is it, it mm -hmm. usually a lot of editing that has to be done, or is it just very, sometimes they're very good, sometimes they're, they're not? Yeah. You know, I, it's always more editing than people think. <clears throat> they think. Often people are very attached to their manuscripts and they think they're perfect. <laughs> and they don't want anything to mess with it. But, and, and they'll come and say, well, my Aunt Edith, who is an English teacher, she looked this over and she made a bunch of changes in there. It's great. But and Aunt Edith you know, may be the perfect editor. We don't know. But it should come to me as a publisher in really good shape. It should be well organized. You know, it should have some, you should do some research about what a good manuscript looks, looks like. And that, that information is out there. Um, one thing you can do is, um, is join an organization like the Independent Publishers of New England. And we are also affiliated with a national organization called the Independent Pub Book Publishers Association. And the, there's, <clears throat> there are tremendous resources in both of those organizations. We take our members' books to uh, major New England book shows. And IBPA does the same on a, on a global basis. So they'll take it to you know, uh, Frankfurt or Beijing or whatever. Um, so you can send your book out. It gives you kind of magnifies your your reach, um, and also just like I said, um, you know, you can learn what makes a good manuscript. So you attend <laughs> these yourself, these mm -hmm. these events. Do your authors, some of the ones you've published, do they attend with you? Yes, to mm -hmm. some some degree. You always, you know? I mean, they don't. It's not required, but it's always. A good thing for an author to do that. I mean, we go to New England Independent Booksellers, which is 300 plus uh, bookstores in the New England region, and they want they want interesting new regional sure. books. You know, they really want them, and and the big publishers go to those events too. But if you can, you know, if you can, I've nabbed a few um, independent booksellers at those shows just by virtue of being there. Um, We'll take your book and represent it to the best of our ability, but you're the only one who can actually represent your book the best. You know, so. Uh, how many, if you could give a percentage, how many authors that come to you with a book proposal are, are ready for you to take them on? Mm -hmm. uh, out, of, out of any 10, what would your guess be? Because yeah. uh, I would have no idea what comes your way. That's a really good question. Um, well, ideas come my way. I'm working with a guy right now who, I'd say maybe half, you know, probably that. Oh, so you know, would take half? Well, uh, yeah, half or I'd them, start working with them in some yeah, way. So either as a potential. consultant, book shepherd, or, or a publisher, if I thought the idea was good enough. Um, I'm working with a guy who, who's been to five Olympic games, uh, two as a coach and three as a, as a rower, and He's like, he wants to do a memoir. He's really famous. And um, he's, I, so I've been kind of encouraging him. It's not quite to the point where I'm actually um, signed him as an author yet. But he was asking me, you know, do you think people really want to hear about this? And I just, I love the idea. I love rowing, for one thing. I, I do a podcast about rowing. <laughs> um, I just, I love that, and I know that people want to hear his stories. So, I, you know, I believe in that, and yeah, that's sure. what I, that, yeah. Are most proposals fiction, or, or, is, mm. or is it vary, or is it half and half, or non-fiction fiction, or? No? I don't do fiction. I do children's, which is, I guess, these books are mine. Um, yeah. Technically fiction, um, but 
they have a message. They can have a social message. And ah, that's 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 interesting. Yeah. Uh, so you don't do fiction at all. If someone mm -hmm. comes to you with a novel, they're I I you send don't, it to you know. Eddie Vincent, who's the head of the independent publishers in New England. He, he does a lot of fiction, um, but. No, I just don't feel qualified. I just don't know that yeah. world. You know, I read more nonfiction than fiction. Um, yeah. I listen to books, and that's another thing. If independent publishers can get the message about diversifying the formats, audiobooks are huge. You know, that's a big um, growth area. You know, ebooks, um, different. You know, different ways of repurposing your content into yeah. blogs you know I and I don't really worry about <clears throat> copyright <laughs> you know if you have a good enough author platform yeah you know you, you basically I mean what are you gonna do if somebody steals your book and publishes it are you gonna spend $50,000 yeah. fighting them in court I don't know I, I can't but usually you would have the, the digital path yeah. That would prove that you, that it's your book, uh, yeah. that you had yeah. it first. Uh, that, that, and not only the digital rights management, happen, but the you know. the platform. I mean, you've got your blog already. You know, you've got your book cover out there. You know, it, people will know it's yours if they find some random copy somewhere. They're gonna kind of know, and there's some of that you just have to kind of put up with. I think. I have a, a good friend in New York who's a nonfiction literary agent, mm -hmm. and I tell you this because I, I didn't realize you, you didn't take f mm -hmm. fiction. And um, her, her major requirement, if she likes the book, mm -hmm. of course she has to like the book and be willing to take it on as an agent, but the second requirement is they have to look good for television. <laughs> so, so there, 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 there it is. But that, that's there is uh, that, she, she's know? told me that several times. Yeah, and yeah. and sometimes she likes an idea enough, she'll have a ghostwriter do it mm -hmm. that does look good on television, and the the actual author will be part of the right. the plan. But right. um, yeah, you know. I do. Um, so the children's it's mostly like sustainable and social justice and diversity and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I do uh, uh, alternative education, which is the major book in that is the Puragaji Handbook, which is a public domain book. So we don't even care if people copy it. <laughs> you know, we hope people will copy it. Oh, okay. But uh, we do sell. You know, we, we cover our costs by selling on Amazon. Now, now as, a, as a small publisher, uh, do you work with one printer when you have the final book printed, right. or do you have several, depending on the type of book? Uh, and in that part of the publishing world? Right, I, um, I usually do a 200 to 500 copy, uh, what they call short run for mm -hmm. book shows and personal sales. I give the illustrators 10 copies. You know, you just need a few copies. Sure. And, uh, but I, I upload to Lightning Source, which is a Ingram company, which is like, um, Ingram Spark is the kind of the self publishers, small publishers one, and Lightning Source is the, but they're the same company. Anyway, it goes to print on demand, which is fulfilled to Amazon, and bookstores can order from Ingram. It's the largest book distribution company in the world. So I'm pretty well positioned. You know, if, if, a, if a bookstore in Italy wants to order my book, they, they can, or here in New York or Boston. Um, not a problem. With print-on-demand, <clears throat> I mean, um, small s press runs, you can get your per copy costs down, but you're going to have to store, you know, 2,000 copies in your basement and hope that you sell them. Yeah, I know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that deal. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, if you've got the cash flow to do that, uh, you will, and you've got the certainty that you're going to sell the books, then why not do that? It, you'll have less per cop. You mean sometimes there's a certainty? <laughs> Is that, where, where do you get that certainty? I don't you know. know. Yeah. I'm it, still chasing it. Is, is, your, is your printer local, like, so you can visit yeah. them? Or, yeah. Or is, yeah. So, okay, that, that. Uh, yeah, well, Independent Publishers of New England has, a lot of the sponsors of our conferences and so forth have been pu printers. So uh, King, McNaughton and Gun, HF Group, there are a lot of good printers, and they're hungry for 
you know, they'll do a pretty good deal on a short run. Oh, that's that's good to know. Yeah. I didn't know that. that yeah. um, you know, and the, the, especially if you're affiliated with an organization, like I'm on the board of IPNE, and you know, we can send them a lot of business or some business. You know, every every little bit helps. And and I can presume that everything comes into you digitally if an author has mm -hmm. a book does an author ever walk in with a printed manuscript and that's all they have I mean like 50 years ago I sometime? would send them away to staples to have it digitized <laughs> or whatever um, yeah. yeah I can't I can't um, I can't be typing stuff in I mean there are a lot of ways you, you can just feed it into a scanner and it, there's a lot of ways to digitize it um, one of my illustrators of this book actually both. No, that one is uh, Digital Illustrator, but this book, uh, who's hiding in this book, is um, he does pastels, you know, he does in watercolor, and then he he scans it himself, so he will give me the the high resolution scanned file that we oh, can then good. put yeah. into. We use InDesign, you know, so we plop it in there, and and Lightning Sources and and Ingram Spark too, I think, are both require an uh, InDesign file. Um, or are, are children's books uh, a great deal of your output, mostly, or...? It just happened to be the last couple books, and, and now they're both doing sequels, so, yeah. you know, yeah. And, but, but children's books, you know, especially, um, I'll just show you the, you know, it's color inside. So that, that yeah, increases really nice. the cost they're, they're, of, yeah. They're really well done. I love this illustrator, yeah. he, Daniel Fiore, he is so sensitive to the content, you know, he was great, but um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, the color raises the cost, of course. You know, so, oh, I, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. But I think today, especially kids, they want color. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. You have to do that, and I, I don't do too much uh, ebook conversion on these, because it's, you know, it's it's pretty hard, but you know, I guess you could have a kid on an iPad flipping through your book. But oh yeah, sure. Yeah. So I'll probably go into that eventually, but I haven't yet. Do you do you ever have a a young a really young person that that has written a kids book come in? I would love to. That's one of my you know? favorite things to do is to nurture young people. <clears throat> you know and. Uh, I, I would love to have a, a young person come to me with a book, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we, we do events for our kids' books, mm -hmm. and the kids are always very interested and excited know, about yeah. it. You know, they, well, and it, this one has a, an activity in the back. It's like, you know, become an author activity. So at our launch in Belmont Books, we, um, we had, you know, the kids filling out this little form and drawing the characters they would have in their book, and yeah, it was really great. Yeah, well, I mean, kids' books now are, are including mm -hmm. DVDs. Mm -hmm. I have a friend in Vermont who wrote a kids' book, and she's a singer and actress, mm -hmm. and she has included a, a DVD of songs about related to her book and separate yeah. from her book, but with her book. Yeah. Uh, so that's becoming more and more of a, a right. thing, just like us. And you us can even do like you can print a QR code in your book. And now a smartphone, if you point your camera at the QR code in a book, it will take them to, to directly to a website immediately. Oh, wow. I know. Isn't I that great? I didn't know that. Is that a new thing? Uh, I used to have, a, have to have an app um, that Jesus. you would use then, you know, but now it's just like my, my um, Pixel 4 Google phone. I just pointed at a QR code and it takes me right to the website. I know. Wow. So uh, wow. we have... Actually, all of our children's books have some aspect of like activity guide or you know to take it further, or so forth. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's it's really fun. It's really good. It's too much fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And um, be beyond the, the the kids' books publishing part of it, mm -hmm. uh, to get back to to the adult um, work. And the, in, in the nonfiction world, uh, you say you, you were talking about a memoir, mm -hmm. and I know that. But but what other nonfiction oh, propositions yeah. do you get uh, right. about? Well, I got um, I got to know a guy who's the director of the Jane Goodall Institute of Nepal, 
and he's been asked, uh, he was after me to come to visit him. So I went over to Nepal last year, and we now have four books in development. One is for a project that they're doing to alleviate the uh, street dog problem. So there's there's been a like community involvement initiative that goes ward by ward in Kathmandu that is solving, you know, vaccinating and um, spaying and neutering dogs. Wow. So it's oh, just, so it's, a, it's a fantastic program and all, you know, grassroots um, driven. And they've gotten the buy-in from the government too. But then there's three other books, um, the conservation books. One is um, Manoj Gautam, who uh, is the director of the Jane Goodall Institute of Nepal. Uh, did a thesis, so we're converting his like his Oxford thesis to a readable book. <laughs> I mean, nothing against Oxford, but you yeah, know, well, you just sure. you can't mass market a, a an, an Oxford uh, thesis. Um, and then a couple other titles about um, conservation work that they do there. So, can you, um, as a general practice, would would put your books, the books that you publish, on Amazon? And mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble, or is that yeah. mm -hmm. okay? And uh, any other platforms that are generally part of what you do, or right? Um, well, these books, these nonfiction books, will probably go on to um, Kobo as well, and I'm going to try and get them into audio because I think that will be. I, I think audio is a huge opportunity for people, for publishers now. But Kobo is a is it's like a. A Kindle, but it's more ad adapted in adopted in Europe and other parts of the world. So it's a it's something to think about. Well, which is what what is it exactly? What it, are, it's an ebook platform. So it's like Kindle. So you may upload to Kindle, and then you Kobo. I mean, if you're a European, you know what Kobo is because it's more common than Kindle. At least it used to be. But it's you know that's it's just an it's just an opportunity. To consider, is, but is it pretty much the same thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. So it's not. There are no big differences. No, it's no just big differences. Another... There might be a slightly different format that you yeah. output okay. from. Yeah. But InDesign, if you use InDesign to format your books, um, it will output to a lot of those, you know, different types of formats. Um, after publication, from what you've told me already, I kind of know the answer to mm -hmm. this. But there is an ongoing relationship yes. with with the authors. Uh, that you have mm -hmm. in this, these group um, things that you do and going to the various uh, events, yeah. et cetera. So they become a growing family yeah. as uh, time yeah. goes on, which is um, yeah. nice and I'm sure gives them more confidence. And mm -hmm. how many second books from these authors, that the authors that you've dealt with, have you published? Well, I'm, we're working on sequels to both of these, or, you know, a series. Yeah. So okay. both of these. So this one, the next one for uh, Daniel McFly will be uh, about the saving the oceans. So that, and then uh, we're going to be doing more. This is like ten diverse authors. Uh, five of them you you are household names, and five are just like African American, uh, Native American, Chinese American. You know the different, just kind of all on the same equal footing. So she's going to do ten, you know, another set of authors, I think. Um, but a sequel in a series is always a good thing to to uh, consider because then, you know, when your new book comes out, you can, people will go back and get they'll look at your other books if they like the the new one. Now, what about uh, longer full full books, full memoirs, or full? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess. In the in the nonfiction world, would be more mm -hmm. difficult. But um, how many along the way, or have any of the people have come to you for their first book, written a second book after that 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 they've presented to you? Yeah, I haven't had too much of that. Although the Piragaji Handbook is now we're working on the fourth edition of that. Um, you know, it's a collaborative, very much collaborative uh, effort. So. I don't think there isn't a particular author. It's like more of a, a collection of authors. So for, for people out there who want to be a writer, perhaps have a manuscript, um, they're, they're looking for a publisher, what advice do you have for them 
I mean, you've mentioned a lot of it, but before coming to you, but some absolutely do this, do this, mm -hmm. do this, don't do this, don't do this, <laughs> don't do this. So they come to you kind of ready yeah. for what you have to offer. Yeah, well, as I said, um, you know, with me, it's, it's like the, the authors I carry have made an effort to establish a relationship with me you know, in an authentic way. You know, so I care about them. And we then support each other going forward and we, we're in it together. Um, but if, if you're just thinking about developing an idea for a book, um, I would say, you know, maybe just start your email list first. It's an easy thing to do, you know, just yeah. Google contacts, you know, get an email list going. Get a blog going and start blogging about it. Make sure you're passionate about your topic. You know, you've got to care a lot about diversity or sustainability to make a book successful. You Even know, to make it happen, let alone successful. Exactly. If, you're, if you're not passionate, yeah. there's no use to And you're the best evangelist for your book. Your publisher, myself included, will not be as passionate about your book as you are. You know, so that's a, yeah. a critical thing. And like I, I just had some statistics of um, self-published books, 160, 1.68 million in 27 in 2018 and up from 1.19 million in 2017. So it's growing every year. Yeah, so you have a lot of competition. I think niche is important. Relationships, leveraging your own contacts and platform. And there are a lot more uh, places looking for content now. So that should make a difference going forward too. Yeah, think about yeah. repurposing your content. Yeah. Publish stuff before it's in a book. Yeah. You know, well, it's good. Well, this has been very informative, very helpful, Charlotte. Thank, thank you. you for coming here and telling us what the small publishing world is all about. This I has love been it. Fun. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you.